Welcome to Transformation Now. I am Bishop Charles Johnson, and I am super blessed and super excited that you have decided to join me once again for another opportunity for me to, to speak into your life. Um, and I don't mean this any kind of way, but I'm glad you're watching me and not somebody else. It's a blessing and I kind of an honor to be able to spend this time with you because part of my purpose in life, I really believe that my purpose for being on the planet is to help people like you succeed that to watch your life progress because it's not about perfection, it's about progression. And it's my job uh, to coach you, to encourage you, empower you, educate you in that direction. So the more successful you become, the more fulfilled I become. So thank you again for joining me. Today's broadcast, we're gonna talk about your mind. And I'm asking you to write, because I'm sure you have pen and paper by now. I'm asking you to write, at the top of your page, mind, M-I-N-D, M-I-N-D, your business. We're going to talk about your wonderful, beautiful mind. All right? So let's go to the scripture. What does the scripture have to say about your mind? Romans chapter number 12, verse number 2 in the New Living Translation says this. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and purpose. If there's any scripture that speaks to the mission and the vision of this show, this would be it. That your mind and your life will be transformed that you go from one form to the next form. You become something totally different just by changing how you think. Now, Bishop, are you telling me that my thoughts have power? Absolutely, they, they have power. That you live based upon how you think. So you have to do something like one of my mentors, Les Brown does. He says to be consciously conscious Consciously conscious, that means you have to pay attention to what you're thinking. Whenever you're thinking something that is negative, whenever you're thinking scarcity, whenever you're thinking sickness, recognize it immediately. And say, why do I have that thought? Where does that thought come from? Because the Bible just showed us here. Again, look at it, Romans 12 and 2. It says, don't copy the behavior and the customs of this world. Now, what are the behaviors and the customs of this world? One is negativity. The world is a consistently negative place, constantly being programmed with negative things and fear, disease, war. All these things are the custom of the world. But what is the custom of the kingdom? What's the custom of God? Well, it's prosperity, it's abundance, it's healing. So don't copy what the world says you need to be thinking about. No, think about what God and the kingdom and heaven is thinking about. Then it goes on to say this, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. You can change who you are as a person by changing how you think. Matter of fact, I truly believe that the people that come into your life come into your life based upon how you think and how you see the world. If you see the world as a negative place, negative people are going to come in. If you see the world as a place of someone that's full of drama, then drama is going to come into your life. But if there are more people like you that see the world as abundant, full of love, possibility, opportunity, then that's what's going to come into your life. So you have to begin right now, this moment, while we t we're together, and even after we are apart for a little while, to mind your business. Think about what you're thinking. Pay attention to when those negative thoughts come in and don't let them live. We're gonna get into it and I'm gonna show you how to do it. I'm even gonna show you where your negative thoughts come from, how you got to this place. But let me tell you, as soon as you start minding your business, as soon as you start paying attention to becoming consciously conscious of what it is you're thinking, 
you can now begin to transform your life like the scripture says. Last thing, then you will learn to know God's will for you. God's will for you is prosperity, is abundance, is happiness, is joy, is fulfillment through him. That's his will for your life. And everything that's not his will for your life shouldn't be in your life at all. So I'm telling you, you don't have to be sick. You don't have to be broke. You don't have to be last. You don't have to be downtrodden. You don't have to be depressed. But you can be happy, uplifted. You can be joyful. You can be excited about your life. You can be excited about your ministry and your business. I'm asking you to expect good things to happen for you. Look for it. When you wake up in the morning, I encourage you to come up with great things to be grateful for. Before you turn on your phone and turn on that negative television, come up with at least four or five things to be grateful for. Now, the, the, the announcer's coming. You know, I got some resources for you. I got some tools for you to use. He's coming, and I'm going to ask you to participate in some of the offers that we have for you because designed to help you, grow you, encourage you. And when he comes back, we're going to get back into how to help you mind your business so your mind becomes more and your life increases. Be right back. Operation Transformation, Proven Strategies for Winning in Life by Bishop Charles Johnson. You will learn three things every believer should know about winning any battle. Three weaknesses your enemy has that you don't know about. Three weapons every believer needs for guaranteed victory in life. Three things you can say to stop your enemy in his tracks. Three biblical strategies that will bring victory in your life. And much more. As a bonus, you will also receive the 52 Weeks of Power CD, powerful affirmations from Bishop Johnson that you can speak over your life for success, abundance, prosperity, and healing in your life business or career for your best gift of fifteen dollars bishop johnson will rush this life-changing package to you call the number on the screen and get yours right now thank you for coming back now if you haven't done it yet i want to encourage you to go and tell a friend or facebook someone inbox tweet text let someone know that bishop charles johnson and transformation now is on and i'm talking about minding your business m-i-n-d mind your business and we talked about right off the bat romans chapter number 12 verse number two and it talks about how uh, we can transform transform our life by how we think and I'm encouraging you to be consciously conscious of how you think what are your thoughts are your thoughts positive are they negative what are they because God has given us the ability to live by how we think so let's go a little further now Proverbs chapter number 23 verse number 7 King James Version this is what it says for as he thinketh in his heart so is he Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. Focus your attention on, for as he thinketh in his heart. Now let's look at this first word, thinketh. Thinketh here means to be done over and over and over again. A good word for this is habit. How you habitually think is how you're going to live your life. Now heart here in this text, the Hebrew word for heart, actually speaks to thinking or mind. So however you think continually in your mind, it says, so is he. So right now, you are the physical manifestation of how you think on a regular basis. Now let me just pause and let that marinate with you for just a minute. That right now, you have manifested how you regularly think about a subject. It could be about money. It could be about 
health. It could be about wealth or ministry, whatever it is, how you habitually think about it as how your life has been shaped. So, Bishop, what are you saying to me? What, I, what I'm saying to you is point number one. Change begins in your mind. You can talk to me all day. You can tell me what you're going to do. But until you make a decision in your mind, nothing is going to change. So, number one, I'm asking you to make the decision to change. And that begins up here. Many of us, we do it all day long. You make a decision and you make those decisions at the snap of a finger. You don't really think about making a decision. You just do it. Many of you, when you're driving to work, you don't really even see the things that are going on around you because your body now has become the mind, which means it's habit now. So you don't see the trees. You just know where to turn. You don't see you know, the, the, the kids at the bus stop anymore. You just know I need to make a left-hand turn here. So you have to consciously make the decision to change in your mind. Number two, thinking is a continual process. It's something that's happening to you all the time. There's never a time, you may, you may say it, but there's never a time when you're not thinking about anything. Oh, what are you thinking about? Oh, nothing. No, you're actually thinking all the time. And all the time that thinking is developing something in your life. So you have to be very, very aware. I, I've done it. I've had to be aware of why I'm thinking that and where that thought came from. And does that thought continue to serve me and get me to the goal that I'm trying to reach? Is God pleased with that thought? How would God think if he knew I was thinking that thought? Well, let me tell you, he does know. <laughs> he does know you're thinking that thought. And number three, your thoughts, the group of your beliefs is what's called a paradigm. It's a set of thinking, a set of beliefs. And that set of beliefs rules your life. So for a moment, take inventory of what you think about certain subjects that mean something to you. Now, I'm not saying by any means that everybody has to be a millionaire and everybody's got to live in a big house. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is, if the thoughts you've been thinking have not gotten you what you believe should be yours and what God has said in his word, why are you still thinking that? Where did those thoughts come from? I'm going to come back and I'm going to share with you where some of those thoughts come from, how you got to, to, to this place, how you even got to this thinking. Again, it's not about blame. It's about responsibility, that you are responsible. So I'm asking you right now, if you would, to write down all the things that you've been thinking about several areas in your life. It may be money. It may be your family. It may be relationships. It may be even your ministry pastor. Write down what you've been thinking, then and ask yourself, why do I think that way? Does it line up with what God would have for my life? And if it doesn't, I'm challenging you. Here is Coach Bishop Johnson challenging you to change that thinking, to do something different now. Again, if there's any scripture that fits this broadcast, is Romans chapter number 12, verse number 2 being transformed by the renewing, some texts say the renovating of your mind. So I'm asking you now to transform, not later, but transform right now. Be willing to face what's not working in your life. Challenge it. Talk to God about it. And see if you can change your own mind. And I'm almost sure you'll be like, I can change that. I don't know where that came from, but it no longer serves me. So it no longer looks like God. It's not what he planned for my life. So I'm asking you right now, mind your business. The announcer's coming. I'll be right back. Affirmations by Charles Johnson will guide you to discover the value and power of your words. Get specific affirmations to use for the major areas of your life. Order your copy today. Welcome back. Now, we just finished talking about uh, that whatsoever, however a man thinketh on a regular basis, 
uh, is who he is, who he has become, who he will become. Now, I want to get into Proverbs chapter number 4, verse number 23. This is what it says, New Living Translation, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. Now, what we discovered earlier is this word heart actually speaks to the mind. So, it says here, let's put mind where heart is, guard your mind above all else, for it determines the course of your life. It's very difficult to be negative and live a positive life. It's very difficult to have negative thoughts and those negative thoughts produce something positive in your life. That whatever it is you're thinking about right now, it's going to govern your life. It, you're going to live by what you've been thinking. So I have to guard my mind. Now what does that mean? I have to be careful about what I allow into my mind. I have to be careful of the conversations I get into, the television programs I watch, the, the music that I listen to, the people that I associate myself with. I have to be very, very careful. This word guard here is, is, is more like the picture that is created with this word guard is like actual soldiers standing around a walled city. They are guarding it. They're making sure that nothing comes in that's not supposed to be there. Now, Bishop, that's hard to do. How can I guard my mind 24-7? Well, I'm asking you to give it a shot. I'm asking you to develop the practice or the habit of watching what comes in. Now, I, I'm not just telling you this and not doing it personally. What I have learned to do, and I'm not saying you have to go to this extreme, but some of the things I've stopped doing is watching so much news. I would watch the 6 o'clock, the 6.30, the 11 o'clock, the 11.30, watching all this, you know, the, the major news networks over and over again all day long, not knowing that I'm receiving into my mind uh, uh, poverty and sickness and war and depression, all these things coming into my mind. So I decided I don't have to know that much. So what I started doing was I just started watching the weather and sports. <laughs> just the, I just want to know, what's, if, is the sun going to shine tomorrow? Is it going to rain? Is it going to snow? And then who won the game? And that's it. The other thing I started doing was I made my car, my vehicle, a mobile classroom. I cut off the radio and I started listening to positive teaching, positive preaching. I, I filled my car with, with positive things. So now all I listen to are things that are uplifting, things that help me guard my mind. You see, the more time you spend guarding your mind, the more you can recognize when something negative comes in. The reason most people live the way they live, they, 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 they um, uh, participate in this negativeness or this negativity is because they don't recognize it. But as soon as you see something positive, you live your life in a positive environment, anything negative that comes in, you start to recognize it. So guard against it. Guard against individuals that all they talk about is what's going wrong. They never have anything good to say. They're always talking about, you know, what the government is doing and what's not right with this person. And, you know, rich people, they're trying to take everything from everybody. Guard yourself against them. Now, this is what the scripture tells us. Guard your heart above all else because it will determine the course of your life. Then... You have to look at the different examples of what we have here. We have poverty, or well, what's the opposite of it? Prosperity. We have sickness, but well, what's the opposite of it? Health. So concentrate on those areas. Focus your thoughts. I'm not telling you to ignore what's there. I'm asking you to make a choice, to decide where your thoughts are going to go, how you're going to think the way you want your life, the course you want it to go. So again, we're talking about minding your mind here. We're talking about being able to decide what you're going to think and making that your habit, making that the course of your life. You can live an absolute positive life if you decide to.
Sure, you're going to have some negative things to happen, but it all depends on how you're going to look at it. And the more positive you are, the more positive the outcome is going to be. I'm almost sure that God would rather you look at the world as a place of wellness and opportunity and prosperity then look at it the way the rest of the world looks at, at it, and the behavior, the custom of the rest of the world. So today, mind your business. One thing that's gonna help you mind your business is some of the resources I'm planning I, I have for you. This is gonna help you, it has to become a habit. So let me give to you, let me give you the opportunity to participate in your change. The announcement is going to come, play close attention, I'm gonna get something directly to you. And I'm asking you as well to connect with me. I want to help you change your mind. I needed help. I want to help you to mind your business. The announcer's coming. Then I'm coming back. We're going to wrap it up. I'm going to give you some keys and some clues. I'm going to show you how you got to where you are and how you can get out. We'll be right, right back. God bless. Affirmations by Charles Johnson will guide you to discover the value and power of your words. Get specific affirmations to use for the major areas of your life. Order your copy today. All right, thank you for coming back and for joining me. Now, uh, very quickly, at the end of our time here, I'm going to get into how did you get this way? Now, Bishop, I get it. I see what you're saying. I, I, I'm beginning to recognize now that my thoughts are leading me down this path that I don't want to go. But the question for me now, Bishop, is how did I even get here? Well, I've got good news. I can tell you how you got there. I can tell you how you got to thinking the way that you think. This is how you did it. Number one, the Bible says uh, faith comes by hearing. So number one, what did you hear? When you were growing up, now uh, scientifically what we've come to find out is between the ages of zero and six, our subconscious mind is wide open. So everything that comes into our minds, everything that we hear, we assume is the truth. That's why you can't convince a six-year-old that Santa Claus isn't, for, isn't real. You, you can't convince them. I don't care how many mall Santas they see in a day. They only believe there's one. Okay, so as a child, what did you hear as it relates to money or health or relationships? What did you hear? Because that's how you began to develop your thinking. Number two, what did you see? What was modeled in front of you? Because whatever was modeled in front of you, you thought was the way things were supposed to happen. How, you know, in, in my own family, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of conversation about money, but I can remember times when my father would be, you know, back then they wrote checks. <laughs> Actually put it in the mail. You remember those days? He, he would, I see him at the table writing checks and I see him, saw him drop his head because he knew there was not enough to meet what needed to be met. He never said a word, but I saw his reaction. So in my own young mind, I began to develop the thinking that you don't have enough. I don't care how hard you work. I don't care what happens, you, you still don't have enough. So you begin to work just to pay bills. Now your whole life becomes just working to pay a bill until you realize at the end of your life that you never lived. So what did you hear? What did you see modeled in front of you? And then next and third, what were your experiences. They're called C experiences, significant emotional experiences. What were those experiences in your life that caused you to think a certain way? Maybe there was infidelity in a marriage or something and now you don't trust any relationships or your thinking has changed about love. Or maybe when you were younger, you saw you had to move from place to place to place and you were getting evicted and cars repossessed. Those are significant emotional events. So now you live a life full of fear, fear of loss, fear of things leaving you. What were your significant emotional experiences? This is how you got this paradigm, this set of beliefs. This is how you got here. So now that you know how you got here, Bishop, before you leave, you got to tell me how to get out of this, man. You can't leave me right here. Well, I'm not going to leave you here. This is how you can get out of 
this mindset that you have. Number one, you have to be conscious of what you're thinking. You have to be conscious of why you're thinking this negative thought. Who taught me this? Even God said to Adam, when Adam said, I was afraid, God said, who taught you that? Where'd you hear that? Because I didn't tell you anything about being afraid. So where did you get this from? I've done it. I had to ask myself, why do I? Why am I talking in such scarcity terms? Where did you get it from? Then number two, decide what you want to think. Isn't that a novel idea? That I can decide what I want to think. The best way to get out of where you are is decide you want to think something different. I don't care what anybody else says about it. I don't care if anybody else agrees with you. How do you think about it? Because how you think, it sets the course of your life. Then number three, what does God's word say about it? Probably the most important part of these three is what does God's word say? His word says that you are to be healed, not sick. His word says that you are to be prosperous and not in scarcity. His word says you are to be above and not beneath. So ask yourself these questions. Is my life lining up? Does my life line up to what he said in his word? This is how you can get out of it. This is how you can start to turn things in your life and change the thinking. And I believe through this broadcast, through listening to me and getting the resources, this is going to help you. I want to pray for you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm praying that, Lord, that everyone that's listening to me, everyone, Father, that I am coaching right now at this moment, is feeling challenged to look at their thoughts and ask themselves, why do I think this way? And then compare their thinking, Father, to your word and then say, I want to change that. Father, thank you for this opportunity you've given me to spend time with them. And I thank you for the minding of their business in Jesus' name. My friend, listen, if any broadcast has changed your life, I hope it's this one. That when you and I part ways in just a few seconds, that you will now begin to challenge everything in your life that does not line up to what God has for you. Thank you so very much for this time we have to spend together. It's an honor for me to coach you. It's an honor for me to inspire you and to help you. I look forward to seeing you again next time on Transformation Now with Bishop Charles Johnson. God bless.